I've checked some of the comments on my videos and you, the viewers, have spoken. So I'm ready to oblige and give you a roundup of the men that you had a crush on. These men are in no particular order. Or are they? Let me know in the comments if you think they are in the correct order. Follow the yellow brick road. George Maharis was not just handsome, but he was also a multifaceted artist who left an unforgettable mark on both screen and stage. His portrayal of Buzz Mardock in the iconic TV series Route 66 catapulted him to stardom. With his rugged charm and his brooding intensity, Maharis became a quintessential wanderer, traversing the highways of America in search of adventure and self-discovery. He served in the U.S. Marine Corps after high school, rising to the rank of corporal and he impressed quite a few readers of Playgirl magazine when he posed for a centerfold in 1970. Do you still have your copy? Let me know in the comments. I'm sorry, but it's the only way I could think of to get you here. This channel usually focuses on actors from the 80s, 70s and 90s, but I mean this actor started his career back in 1986, so what the hell. We're gonna take a look at him for this video. Paul Walker was a man whose existence plays across the silver screen like a comet, leaving behind a trail of stardust and memories. Uh, you know Byron, don't you? Yeah, I think everybody knows Byron. <laughs> In his early days, Paul graced television screens as a child actor. I'm just recording lots of different scenes. It's for a project I'm working on at school. But it was his Fast and Furious franchise that etched his legacy in cinematic stone. Chosen by People magazine as one of the 50 most beautiful persons in the world in 2001, he was definitely a looker and an eternal hunk who still visits his fans in their dreams. His legacy burned brighter than any exhaust flame, a celestial gear aid forever chasing horizons beyond the sun. You're serious. That's a heart attack. Yeah, I'm clearly delusional. But how about a chance to prove me wrong? Did you know I have a second channel? That's right, my second channel consists of original content, as well as me exploring the area that I live in, as well as some dad jokes. Ever wondered why golfers carry two pairs of pants? It's in case they get a hole in one. So what are you waiting for? Go on, check out my second channel. A link to that channel is in the description of this video. Born under the vast Texas sky on May 15, 1955, Lee Horsley emerged into this world with a twinkle in his eye, a cowboy destined to straddle the realms of movie, television and theatre. Before Hollywood, he performed on Broadway in The West Side Story. His voice, a harmonious blend of prairie winds and moonlit ballads that eventually carried him to Hollywood. His legacy, like a tumbleweed rolling across the prairie, whispers tales of adventure, love and the eternal quest for horizons yet unseen. Oh, you were right, Mrs. Lawson. Children have got no business growing up with a man like me. Bobby the Brain Heenan, leading ravishing Rick Rude to the ring, Mr. Heenan. Richard Irwin Rood, known to the world as Ravishing Rick Rood, was a wrestling maestro, fighting in the ring with the grace of a ballroom dancer and the menace of a midnight prowler. Just picture him, oiled muscles, a smirk that could melt glaciers, and a mane of hair that defied gravity. And don't forget the mustache. Super fly snooker. You know, Bobby, when I was a boy, I used to love to catch flies. Beyond the ring? Rude was a master of mind games. He taunted crowds, insulted their hometowns, and left scars on the collective psyche. Did this make him a hated wrestler, or did it make the crowds love him even more? You decide. On March 6, 2017, 18 years after his untimely death, it was announced that Rick Rude would finally be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Boy, this was a tough one. His IMDB page under trivia only has two words, hairy chest. So finding information about this specific actor online proved a daunting task. He began his acting career in the adaptation of True Grit in 1978 and starred in the 1979 made-for-TV movie The Legend of the Golden Gun. He also made several guest appearances on TV shows like The Dukes of Hazzard, Knight Rider, TJ Hooker oh, and Murder, She Wrote. With very little information about him available online, there are no credible internet sources indicating what he's currently up to or whether or not he's even still alive. It's probably safe to assume that he's alive and in good health. Yeah, I can ride. Call me Snake. 
Kurt Russell made his acting debut at a tender age of 12, gracing television screens in the Western series The Travels of Jamie McFeeters, which aired between 1963 and 1964. And Kurt Russell in his first film appearance. I don't need you, I don't need anybody! But it was his collaboration with Disney that truly set him on a magical path to stardom. He starred in The Computer War Tennis Shoes, Now You See Him, Now You Don't, and The Strongest Man in the World and was hailed as one of Disney's top new young stars. Buick Centurion convertible can't even be measured in terms of dollars and cents, am I right? Most people watching this video probably developed a crush on him after seeing him in movies like Escape from New York and its wild sequel Escape from LA, or when he was battling extraterrestrial horrors in The Thing and brought comedic chaos to Big Trouble in Little China. I feel pretty good. <laughs> I'm not, uh, not scared at all, I just feel kind of... He's not just a handsome face either. His portrayal of the rock and roll legend Elvis Presley in 1979's Elvis earned him an Emmy nomination. It's gonna take about 20 minutes for that cracker to get out to the connector, another 10 minutes to see there's no accident, another 20 minutes to get back in. That's 50 minutes. That is exactly the amount of time you have to get me my money. Bruce Willis's journey to Hollywood leading man status reads like an awe-inspiring script. A young man with a stutter, a lineage of blue-collar warriors, and a fondness for wisecracks. Can I ask you a question? How do I look? Like a fraternity thing? He was destined to set the silver screen ablaze with his rugged good looks and his unique personality. The 1985 TV series Moonlighting catapulted him into the spotlight, where he danced between comedy and drama. But it was his role as John McClane that etched his name into action hero lore. The Die Hard franchise turned him into a symphony of chaos, glass shards, one-liners and explosions. His devilishly handsome smirk became a weapon and his white tank top became a fashion statement. With a strikingly blue-eyed sparkle, rugged good looks and a confident tough guy demeanor. Christopher Maloney has captured the interests of both male and female viewers on TV. He achieved small screen success by betraying both sides of the law. His sexually appealing portrayal of the psychopathic killer in the suspenseful prison drama Oz initially captured the attention of audiences. I, for one, stayed up late to watch Oz, hoping that he would be taking a shower in that evening's episode. Before becoming an actor, he used to work as a bouncer, a bartender and a personal trainer. Jobs which helped to shape him into the lovable tough guy that so many fell in love with on the small screen. Have a great winter! I'm gonna go hump the fridge. What? Name's Bond. James Bond. Before the world knew him as James Bond, Brosnan practiced his craft at the Drama Center in London after leaving school at the tender age of 16. As the fifth actor to don the tuxedo, Brosnan played James Bond from 1995 to 2002, leaving an incredible mark in films like Golden Eye, Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not Enough and Die Another Day. His career flourished after his time as 007, and he starred in some impressive movies like Dante's Peak. Tonic, to magmatic. This thing is gonna blow. But let's not overlook his quirky role in Mamma Mia. I have two grown children. I know something about letting go. The first two movies that he saw in a cinema, Goldfinger and Lawrence of Arabia, are also the two films that have had the most influence on him. And much to the contrary, his favorite actor is the former Monty Python actor, John Cleese. Don't forget, Natalie. We will look equally gross to him. Step by step, day by day. Show me a gay guy who didn't have a crush on Patrick Duffy and I'll show you a liar. A staple of TV during the 80s and 90s, Duffy's best known for his roles as Bobby on Dallas during the 80s and Frank on Step by Step during the 90s. The primetime soap opera Dallas became a sensation and Duffy's portrayal of Bobby became a hit and made him an overnight star. Mark decides to help us further our exploration of the oceans. I have not learned enough. Did you have a poster of him on your bedroom wall back in the 80s? Did you have a poster of him without a shirt on your wall back in the 1980s? Do you think he belongs on this list? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, why not check out some of the other videos on this channel? For a similar video to this one, click on this link or you can check out something else which is a little bit different but equally entertaining by clicking on this link.